Happy sunshine, family. I've been working on getting another microphone hooked up to the laptop, and I've got a pretty interesting way that I've jury-rigged it uh, right now, waiting for some more connections to come in, and uh, hopefully this will work great for this video, and it will certainly let me know if my ideas are going to work going forward as far as this sound goes. Yeah, there are so many different places I had to go to to adjust the sound settings for my microphone. Uh, that was quite comical. Alrighty, let's head on over to the detention hearing transcript. Uh, I'm redoing the part three video. Uh, one, because of the sound, and two, because I recorded that last one while I had a video editing program rendering in the background, and that was too much for my system, and uh, the screen capture did not record the changes in the screen as I was scrolling through the transcript reading, and uh, you just weren't able to follow along with your eyes as well as your ears. So at the end of page 22, uh, we're kind of picking up in the middle of this back and forth that Heather and Judge Shirley are having. Uh, relative to her status, is she representing herself or presenting as herself? And these were some... These were some interesting terms that we talked about in the prior video. So this is where we're picking it up. Judge says, yeah, yes, you desire to represent yourself, yes. <clears throat> Heather says, yes, I'll go back and correct it later, yes. And you give up your right to be represented by an attorney. Heather replies, I know that you said not to bring this up, but without prejudice of reservation of the jurisdiction, I will, which is why I didn't want to address the issue of pro se, pro per, etc. until after we had done jurisdiction. Judge replies, okay, let's suppose I find jurisdiction. Heather says, okay. Judge continues, is appropriate here. Heather says, okay, if, whether you find it or don't, the point was, is, that there is a difference between me presenting on behalf of myself and me presenting as self, that I am myself. I'm not here on behalf of anyone. I'm not an attorney representing myself as an attorney. I am one and the same. I'm just me, and I'm going to be moving forward. Judge Shirley replies, every human that comes into this court has a right to represent themselves. You have that same right as every other person. They don't have the right to represent anybody else. Heather says, uh-huh. Judge continues, only a lawyer can do that, and only a lawyer that's properly in this court can do that. So the only person you are representing is yourself. Heather starts, and that's just, then she gets cut off. The court says, that's all I'm asking you. Heather continues, and that is a matter of difference in legal status, and I'm just trying to say, judge cuts her off, it isn't. Heather continues, the correct legal status. So she's just trying to say the correct legal status, and the judge says, that's legal, and Heather cuts him off. I know you disagree. Judge says, that's just legal wrong. It's just mumbo jumbo. It really isn't anything. This is a very interesting word, or very interesting that the judge uses the words mumbo jumbo. Heather says, okay. Judge says, are you giving? Heather cuts him off. To answer your question, yes, I will go forward. All right. And are you giving up your right, waiving your right to be represented by a lawyer? That's a yes or a no. Heather replies, without prejudice, yes. Okay, and is your decision completely voluntary on your part? Without prejudice, yes. All right, all right. I am prepared to find that the defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived her right to counsel. 
and I will permit her to represent herself. Do you have any disagreement or objection to that finding, Miss Davidson? No, Your Honor. Okay, any misstatement as far as you understand, Mr. Lloyd? No, Your Honor. All right. Now, she has requested that I appoint you as standby or elbow counsel to assist her in this matter in that capacity. Before I get to the qualifications on that, would you be willing to be so appointed? Mr. Lloyd responds, yes, Your Honor. So you understand the limited nature of that appointment? Yes, Your Honor. That you are only to assist her, but you are always to assist her with regard to making a record, helping her with filing, being a liaison on her behalf to the court. But you do not direct the case. It's her case. Do you understand that? I understand that, Your Honor. All right. You can provide her copies and advice and advice on the rules and procedure, but it's still her decision on how to try the case. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. So, Miss Tucci Giraffe, before court this morning, did you? And then Miss Davidson cuts off the judge. Your Honor, might I be heard? Uh, yes. Just briefly, the United States, it's not typically our role to object to standby counsel or counsel, but the rules provide that the defendant must be indigent to have appointed counsel. Indigent just means that you can't afford it yourself, that you're low income. Judge says, I was just about to go over the, and then Miss Davidson cuts Judge Shirley off. Yes, Your Honor, and I just wanted to point out several inadequacies with her interview. She says that she's fully supported by her husband, but she refuses to give any information regarding her husband. And the defendant was arrested at Trump Hotel, and we proffer that she was paying for that hotel, and it was $700 a night. If you also look at her travel, it looks that her travel, she has substantial means. And we would oppose her being treated as indigent simply because she chooses not to work. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge says, all right. Heather says, Your Honor, may I respond to that? Judge says, yes, Mr. Lloyd, at every step from here on, you're not appointed yet. We're talking about you being appointed, but I hope you will advise her at least of her rights against self-incrimination that I've tried to remind her. I'm very willing to discuss the matters that we normally discuss in every case because those shouldn't be detrimental or the least bit incriminating, but I never know what somebody is going to say and it could be detrimental to them. So, Mr. Lloyd says, Well, Your Honor, let me... If I might, I was present this morning for the defendant's interview. Judge says, Right. Mr. Lloyd continues, That generated the recommendation offered to the court this morning by pre-trial services. With respect to the means of Miss Tucci Giraffe's husband, obviously... In the marshal's lockup, Mr. Giraffe was not there. I believe that he would be happy to talk with the pretrial services and probation officers about that. I am informed that, that the defendant did spend the night with two other people at the President's Hotel inside the District of Columbia and that it was for significantly less than $700, split three ways. And apart from that, I would like to make it plain on the record that the defendant is advised by me as standby counsel that in responding to the court's inquiries, she needs to make certain that she does not provide a response under oath that would place her at risk for prosecution of any crime against the United States or any of its states. I have found Miss Tucci Giraffe to be very capable of understanding my advice and statements. I hope she continues to be. Judge Shirley says, all right, I think she does too. I'm just trying to always at every turn remind people because sometimes they just take off and start talking and eventually say something that's very detrimental to them. Mr. Lloyd says, and I thank the court for that because I've had what feels like more than my share of very chatty defendants. Judge says, yes, yes.
Mr. Lloyd continues, usually sitting in the backs of police cruisers. And in the last video, or my first run on this video, I said that uh, Mr. Lloyd is speaking some truth right there. There's an awful lot of statements that uh, people make when they're sitting in the backs of police cars that uh, are ultimately really damaging for their position in the legal system. So the judge continu continues, well, and invariably, they think that that is assisting them, and I can appreciate probably why, but because she's law trained, she would understand that none of that would really be beneficial to her in front of me, you know, in this particular case, because my decisions are very limited in these, in these confines, if you will, to what I'm asking her. So I'm not trying her case. I'm not going to be trying her case. And I'm just trying to get through the basics on this. So Ms. Tucci Giraffe, prior to the hearing in this, this morning, I believe you met with the probation officers and provided information and then signed a financial affidavit. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. I met with Miss, Ms. Smith. Okay, before we go on to the next page, uh, one of the points in the first run of this video I remember making about this particular paragraph here on page 28, uh, Judge Shirley's comments, lines 12 through 19, or even, even a little bit further, all the way through 23. Uh, there are certain duties and authorities of a magistrate judge versus the district judge. Now, Judge Shirley, who's talking here, is a magistrate judge. And he can pretty much do anything, any of the duties that a normal judge would do in the court systems, except he will not preside over a felony trial. And Heather's trial and Randy's trial, they're both felony trials. So... Thomas A. Varlin is the judge who is ultimately supervising everything that uh, Judge Shirley is doing in reference to Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. Okay, so Heather says that she met with Ms. Smith. Judge says, pardon? I did meet with Ms. Smith and signed a financial affidavit. All right. And is the information you provided on there true and correct? Heather says, The only thing that seems to be, as far as I said that, where it says, quote, She shared her husband supports her financially, end quote. I said that he actually works, and that money all goes to supporting our four children and that I didn't know what his finances were because he had just received a new job with a promotion recently. So I wasn't sure what the amount was and that they would have to speak with him when he showed up here in court. Obviously, there hasn't been a moment for them to do that yet, but that he would willingly share that information. As far as what I live off of, it is stated correctly in here with the bank accounts at 48. And as Mr. Lloyd had spoken about earlier regarding the room, it was accurate that he had stated there was three people sharing the costs and the room was well under $700. It was $359 on a, from the internet, so it was actually cheaper for us to stay there. So I'm not sure where the state's getting the information on that. Then again, I was picked up, so I don't know what the bill actually was at that point. The service and fees and taxes. Judge Shirley says, so, okay. So generally, here's the questions I usually ask people. So all the money you have and all the bank accounts, security account, any kind of account of any nature is $48? Heather says, yes, other than the Treasury Direct Deposit account, yes. And, that, and I, still, I still find that just brilliant. Um, I really had a spontaneous laugh on my first run of this video. 
Um, but Heather, Heather knew that the judge was going to be asking her questions about finances uh, before the court's going to appoint her a lawyer. And so <laughs> this was great. He wanted to know about any kind of account of any nature. And she says, other than the other than the TDA accounts, other than the Treasury Direct Deposit accounts, yes. And so, of course, when she's throwing that out there and it's already on the record and he doesn't know what that is, he's going to say, other than what? Heather says, an account that I don't have access to, which is what I believe that they're alleging a conspiracy against. <laughs> oh, this is great. So she's telling the judge that the TDA account is the account against which the prosecutions or Heather Davidson's case is alleging the conspiracy charge against Heather Antucci. So the judge says, okay, and he doesn't want to touch this TDA thing at all, so he's just moving right along. Okay. And as far as employment for you, it says you last worked May 2016 from home. Is that correct? As a consultant, lawyer consultant. Heather says, actually, from until May 19th, 2016, I actually was traveling around the world doing a job, but that was to foreclose on a whole bunch of different international corporations. That job was done as of May 16th or May 19th, and I came back here to start a consulting business. It was just starting and getting up off the ground when I was in D.C., so I hadn't received anything other than the $700, which I utilized for costs to stay in D.C. Judge says, all right, so you've only earned $700 from that consulting business. Yes. All right. And then Heather continues, and the amount, 48. I don't know if that's the current amount right now. It could be a little less. Judge says, go ahead, I'm sorry. Heather continues, that was the, the $48 account and then a credit card, which has, since, which has been since frozen. So those were my only two means. Judge asks, and do you understand that you don't, or, and do I understand that you don't own any real property? Heather says, I have no real property, no. And if you were to work, if I were to release you and you were to work, do you have any idea what your income would be? Heather says, you know, probably around the same amount, $700. Say 700 a month, and that would be very liberal. Judge says, okay. Heather continues, at this point, because of this case and everything else, I don't know if I would be able to get anything except for remedial, such as waitressing or anything else at this point. Judge says, all right. Heather continues, due to this pending charge. Judge says, all right. And your husband is Yosef Giraffe? Yes. And he works at Logan International? Heather says, he would have to speak directly because I'm not sure of all the facts, but he works. Judge cuts her off. You don't know where your husband works? Well, the new company that he started for, Judge cuts her off. I didn't ask that. I just asked where. It's the Sky Company is in Massachusetts, Boston, Massachusetts, but they do all the servicing for... As I understand it, they do all the servicing for the airplanes at Logan International Airport, which is where he's located. Court says, so he works at Logan International. Heather says, but not for Logan International. It's for another company. And the judge says, I didn't ask that. I just asked where. I mean, this judge is being really difficult here. Heather's just trying to provide a clear answer uh, when she really doesn't know what the answer is. Judge needs to be asking her husband these questions. So the judge says, I didn't ask that. I just asked where. Okay. 
And just in rough numbers, what kind of income does he have per year? Heather says, may I inquire as to that? Court says, you don't know? Like I said, he got a raise. I don't know what... Judge says, before he got the raise. Heather says, I believe it was a minimum wage starting and then there was a promotion or some amount higher that he's getting now. All right. But he would be able to confirm directly with with Mr. Miller and Ms. Smith. Judge says, I assume that it's under $30,000 a year. I would say that's a safe assumption, replies Heather. Okay, and just for the sake of clarity, is Mr. Giraffe in the courtroom? Heather says he is. Judge asks, is that accurate that you make less than $30,000 a year? Mr. Giraffe says yes. The court, or excuse me, Judge Shirley says, he said yes. Returning to you, Ms. Tucci Giraffe, does that income also go to help support your, go, (laughs) I'm tripping over my tongue. Uh, Returning to you, Ms. Tucci Giraffe, does that income also go to help support your four minor children? Heather says, as far as I know, all that income goes to supporting the four minor children. I haven't seen any of that income. All right, all right. I'm going to find that she qualifies at this point to have appointed standby counsel. I am appointing you, Mr. Lloyd, to serve as elbow or standby counsel pursuant to the Criminal Justice Act, 18 U.S.C. Section 3006A. It is my hope that you will aid and, to some extent, Relieve me of having to explain and enforce all the basic rules of courtroom protocol, procedure, and decorum. You should help Ms. Tucci Giraffe with regard to procedural and evidentiary obstacles that she might find in completing a task, like we mentioned earlier, introducing evidence or objecting to testimony. And also, you can provide her technical assistance in the presentation of her defense and preserving the record for appeal. Do you understand the role? Yes, Your Honor. Could I ask the court's indulgence with respect to appointing me as of this past Thursday when I first appeared in this case? Judge says, I take that is for voucher purposes? Yes, Your Honor. Well, if you'll submit it as a nunc pro tunc, the court will be inclined to do so. I want to think about that for a minute but it's not anything we need to take up at this moment. So that will come later, okay? Thank you, Your Honor. And I point out that the judge is using the term nunc pro tunc right here. And that's an interesting term. And I'm gonna bring up another window here. Nunc pro tunc, the Latin term, translates literally to Now for then. This term is commonly used in the U.S. legal system to signify that a court ruling or an order applies retroactively to a ruling made at an earlier date. The most common use of nunc pro tung is to correct clerical errors or accidental omissions made by the court in a written order or ruling. So what we've got going on here is the judge is using the term nunc pro tunc, which basically means retroactively, now for then, uh, in reference to the appointment date of Mr. Lloyd on this case. He wants to make sure that it's retroactively appointed for uh, the past Thursday so that he gets paid for the time that he spent on this case. And this is also the nunc pro tunc is what Heather claims was cut out of the detention hearing transcript when she was providing her response during swearing in. Okay, so the judge continues. All right, so at this point, Ms. Tucci Giraffe, you represent yourself. Mr. Lloyd will continue to aid you on a limited basis as your elbow or standby counsel. All right. 
I understand we're here for a detention hearing, and that's what the government's, or excuse me, and what's the government's position and why? Ms. Davidson says, Your Honor, we believe that Ms. Tucci Giraffe is a f risk of flight, and we ask that she be detained. Okay, well, this is about where I had stopped reading uh, for part three. So I hope that the video is more clear and smooth, and I hope that the sound is just perfectly clear and easy on your ears. All right, I love you guys a lot. Thank you for all your feedback and your comments and your love and your light and your links. You're a beautiful family. Thank you so much. I love you. Bye-bye.